Buhari reaffirms Nigeria's commitment to partner Germany, Siemens on Electricity. Nigeria and Mexico to sign Memorandum of Understanding on Export of Agricultural Produce from Nigeria. Plus, oil steady as rate hike talk counters China demand hopes. This is Business Express on the network service of the NTA. And we are reaching you from Abuja, the nation's capital. I am Musa Abubakar. to speed with business development. Uh, President Muhammad Buhari has reaffirmed the commitment of the federal government towards improving electricity supply in the country by resolving capacity deficit across the entire value chain of the power sector. This was while granting audience to the President and Chief Executive Officer of Siemens AG, a German consortium committed to meeting the growing global demand for energy. State House correspondent Adam Usambo has the details had in 2019 signed an implementation agreement towards dramatically improving the quantity and quality of power supply in the country for sustainable growth and development of the economy. Under the agreement being implemented in three phases, Nigeria's overall grid capacity is expected to rise to 25,000 megawatts in the final phase. The Siemens Energy team is already on ground and are fast-tracking the efforts to close out on the technical and commercial issues. For instance, the need to ensure there is alignment on turnkey frameworks, faster delivery periods of brownfield substations upgrades, loose distribution transformers, and local technical standards for project execution. We believe this is the right approach that will get us across the line in good time. I just would like once again to reconfirm our commitment to the plan, to the initiative and to the country to push in the next couple of weeks as, and months really as much forward as is still possible to make sure that we can really build this backbone of the energy system. President Muhammad Buhari described as reassuring that the first set of transmission equipment aimed at delivering 2,000 incremental energy has arrived in the country and will soon be installed to serve Lagos and Abuja, the nation's capital. The Presidential Power Initiative remains a priority project for our administration. And Nigerians believe in the value that the Siemens brand can deliver. However, what I like to see is that we attain completion of the entire transaction process by December 2022. This will entrench the mandate of the Prudential Power Initiative in full committal terms. On our part, nothing is spared to ensure we improve the lives and livelihoods of our citizens. While the overall framework for technical and commercial arrangements are being concluded, plans have been finalized towards ensuring that 10 power transformers and 10 mobile substations are delivered and installed by May next year. And out of the 5,000 engineers expected to be trained at the end of the program, 200 have already been trained on network development studies representing an important knowledge transfer process. I therefore urge Siemens not to relent in ensuring that our commitment to Nigerians 
in delivering the presidential power initiative project is fulfilled. The outcome of this collaboration will deliver critical business enablers and opportunities to engage young enterprising Nigerians in various endeavors. President Buhari used the forum to express appreciation to Chancellor Olaf Schock of Germany for his government's continued support to the Presidential Power Initiative of Nigeria. From the State House, Adam Musambu. Now, the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, and the Asset Management Company of Nigeria, Amcon, have completed the purchase agreement for the acquisition of 100% of the equity in Polaris Bank by Strategic Capital Investment Limited, SIL. Statement by the Director, Corporate Communications, Os uh, Osita Wasubi, indicates that uh, Polaris has been operating as a breach bank since 2018 when the Central Bank of Nigeria intervened to revoke the license of the former Sky, Sky Bank PLC and establish Polaris Bank to assume its assets and certain liabilities. Still, SEAL has paid an upfront consideration of 50 billion naira to acquire 100% of the equity of Polaris Bank and has accepted the terms of the agreement, which includes the full repayment of the sum of 1.305 trillion naira, being the consideration bonds in general. The CBN thus received an immediate return for the value it has created in Polaris Bank during the stabilization period, as well as ensuring that all funds originally provided to support the intervention are recovered. Now, the Executive Secretary, National Sugar Development Council, uh, Zak Adedeji, has hailed President Mohamed Buhari for approving the Phase 2 plan for the implementation of the Niger Sugar Master Plan, an ambitious and well-thought-out policy for the sugar sector, saying the gesture will boost investors' confidence and also attract more investment to the industry. Adedeji made the assertion in a Lafiagi uh, quarrel state during a visit to assess the level of work so far, discussed the new modalities for reporting progress in line with the uh, plan phase two guidelines and have more on the supremacy of the plan, which he described as the guiding principle of the sector. A lot of challenges with the identified, uh, as you know, that Nigeria is part of the global system. Uh, so the delay that you see in some areas uh, were explained based on the scarcity of forex inflation wall in Ukraine and many other uh, external factors uh, that actually uh, imparted the way they would have loved to move. With an initial 10-year mandate to revitalize the sector to enable Nigeria to attain self-sufficiency in sugar production, the Nigeria Sugar Master Plan was first launched in 2012 and began operation in 2013. Only recently, the Federal Executive Council approved the second phase of the plan to operate from 2023 to 2033, a development held by top industry players. Still on agriculture, Nigeria and Mexico are to sign a memorandum of understanding on export of agricultural produce from Nigeria. Consequently, the Federal Ministry of Agriculture is strengthening the quarantine service towards policing all agricultural produce going out or coming into the country. Let's join Musa Babalu for details. The role of the Nigerian Agriculture Quarantine Service is more of policing and ensuring quality and standard of all agricultural produce going or coming into the country. And this is why the agency has a paramilitary department that enforces law regarding production and marketing of produce. <laughs> Vincent Isegbe is the director general of the agency. He is here to present the scorecard of the organization the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Mohammed Mahmoud so, Abubakar. In the case, the single point of command for all agricultural quarantine activities and the administration in Nigeria as the National Agricultural Quarantine Authority of the country, the first line of defense against pests of economic importance, its scope of duties require the agency to have a robust research base 
enforcement compliance ability, and the standing to facilitate access to the global market for Nigerian foods and agricultural commodities. The minister announced that Nigeria has succeeded in ensuring that the ban on Nigerian vegetables in the United States and Mexico is lifted. Uh, the reaching of this uh, deal is a milestone achievement for Nigeria Agricultural Quarantine Service and administration of uh, His Excellency President Muhammad Buhari. Uh, the, export, the export of Zobo is a spinner of tens of millions of US dollars for Nigeria. It is an emblem of the abundant opportunities to produce, add value, export, and earn foreign exchange from scores of the agricultural product. In the first week of November, Nigeria and Mexico will finalize the setup standard for export of hibiscus. Nigeria exported $35 million worth of the produce to Mexico recently. Musa Baba Aliyu. Well, to talk further on quarantine service and ensuring standards of agricultural produce coming and going out of the country is Dr. Anthony uh, Chuzia, Director of Planning Research and Development, Nigeria Agricultural Quarantine Service. You're welcome to Business Express. Thank you for having me. Okay, can, can, let's begin by you telling us the processes of the quarantine service we're talking about here. Thank you so much for the opportunity once again. Mm -hmm. Nigeria, at least uh, I want to start with, the, with our mandate, the main mandate of Nigeria Cultural Quarantine Service is basically the prevention of introduction of exotic diseases, the introduction, the spread of uh, exotic diseases, that's we call it for a layman language, foreign disease coming into this country and going out. So that is why we can be, you can, we, we can be found at the international borders, seaports, international airports, and land border, international land borders. We are also in the interstate control posts, this time around internally, where we flag off diseases, where we prevent diseases from cutting across. That's our main mandate. And the uh, Nigeria Cultural Quarantine Service is purely regulatory. Okay. Of course, a paramilitary agency. Okay, C can you now tell us the, uh, the uh, role of quarantine uh, in export of perishable produce? Beautiful. Mainly inspection and certification for our products to go out and be acceptable outside this country, Nigeria Cultural Quarantine Service must inspect the wholesomeness of these products. And so most of these products that are rejected outside this country actually didn't pass through quarantine scrutiny. They didn't pass through us. Because of the porous, like I told you, processes and borders and uh, outlets where these things go from, they find their w a way outside the shore. And of course, by the time they are inspected and they have found one thing, that is where you hear that rejection you are talking about. Mm -hmm. And that is why we still cry out that there are some points that quarantine should be that we are not. I'm talking of exit points. I mean, the ease of doing business stuff, I mean, through the vice president. Okay. I mean, that is headed by the vice president okay, at uh, the time. Okay, uh, yeah. uh, the, the U.S. has just lifted a ban uh, uh, initially placed on vegetables from Nigeria. Mm. Uh, c can you tell us what led to the development in the first place? Yes, I think I have to correct something here. Okay. U.S. never banned Nigerian okay. vegetables. The problem is from our own side. I'm talking of the exporters now. Mm. Suppose that UK, of course, receive our, accept our vegetables. So, so it's of actually the, the it, it wasn't it wasn't a ban, it but was, but was it a case of rejection? No. Okay. It was a case of maintaining cold chain. Okay. The long distance and the 
You understand what I'm doing? Mm. period that the vegetables move from here to U.S. is so long by the time it gets there. It's they are, of course, withered. Yes. They are withered and they are not no longer uh, wholesome. That is where the problem. And if you want to go through UK and take maybe seven hours flight to US, these products would have gone down. They wouldn't be so fresh. So definitely, they will be flagged down. And that's the rejection people are talking about. So, but if we handle our own angle here, I mean, I'm talking of taking this product, maintaining the coach chain the way it should be, they will arrive US. At, I mean, at that first so, so level. Now, what are we doing so to ensure? Rejection. What are we doing to ensure that that doesn't happen again? Good. We are, of course, in partnership, and we we'll continue to advocate. Is advocacy telling our potential uh, uh, partners? I'm talking of the exporters. Of what about country. enforcement? Because at the end of the day, it rubs on other words. Yes, that is. Uh, I think I, I, I was expecting it. Mm -hmm. Like I said, quarantine, of course, a paramilitary organization of the Federal Ministry of Agriculture. Okay, we'll, we'll come to that. Yes, we'll come to that. <laughs> that is why we are paramilitary. Yeah, so we okay. enforce. We enforce. Well, and since we, you, you, you pick it, tell us the role yes, of the paramilitary. Yes, like I said, if we are at the right place mm. and we get hold of this people that violate these processes. Mm -hmm. Definitely, what would, we wouldn't even allow it to go, go out in the first place because you would have a kind of showed us how you are going to maintain your coaching, which of course we keep on hammering and telling them that this is the way to go. By the time you try to beat these processes that are known, definitely your products will be rejected. And quarantine will take the blame. It is, we don't take the blame, it is the exporters and the agents that try to flout some of these things otherwise there are standard procedures that they should follow which of course they violate now, that's the problem now tell us about this agreement between nigeria and mexico thank you um just three weeks or a month ago the new uh, um, uh, mexican ambassador uh, i think we appreciate the effort he has put in he visited us at the headquarters, and uh, there was this. What will happen with Mexico? You know, in, since 2017, we've been exporting. Okay. Until the, uh, the time came when this uh, uh, problem came in. Of course, the problem was that they have a new, uh, uh, a new law, which of course they want Nigeria to a kind of uh, follow. And uh, by the time we brought, uh, brought them together, we have been working assiduously to make sure that we are all on the same page. And when he came, there's, I mean, we concluded on what to do, and there's, we are just trying to cross the T's and dot the I's. A, a new work plan has just been developed. Within two weeks, Nigeria will start exporting. Uh, hibiscus again. Okay, uh, hibiscus. It's hibiscus. Okay. Which, of course, I had one person say it's Zobo. Okay. And normally, I look at balance. It's <laughs> now, hibiscus. Before I actually let you, before I let you go, um, what's the role of technology briefly? Just. Yes. The, the We are working seriously mm. on this. We, in Nigeria, cultural quarantine service, mm. you know, we just came into. Uh, our act came into being in 2018. Uh, it was so, uh, man, uh, we, we appreciate what the uh, uh, Commander in Chief of the Federal Republic of Niger, President Mohamed Bolabar, signed our bill, and uh, we are developing. In fact, we have a lot of labs. Okay. At, 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 I mean, at, it's only to be equipped. We have one in Ibadan, one is coming up in Abuja here. Okay. We're definitely. ICT is the bend to go. I mean, the way to go. Thank you I'm very much. Uh, thank you very much, Director of Planning, Research, and Development, Nigeria Agricultural Quarantine Service, Anthony Achuzia. Thank you once again for having me. Well, let's take a trip to the commodities market.
And that Kauko has global market update. European markets were lower this Friday as political chaos in the UK continues following the resignation of the Prime Minister. The DAX was 1.61% down, UK's Fitzy lost 0.82%, and the French CAC sank 1.62%. Stocks this year also traded lower on Friday as investors weigh inflation data from several economies. The indicator to five in Japan slipped 0.43% to 26,890 and the Hansing index declined 0.42%, while the Shanghai Composite gained 0.13%. The negative sentiment in Europe and Asia also rubbed off on U.S. equities as stocks fell across the board. Futures for the Nasdaq 100 slipped 1%, while futures linked to the Dow Jones Industrial Average lost 148 points and the S&P 500 dropped 0.69%. African stocks on their part wrapped up the week in mixed territory. South Africa's JSE Africa Top 40 dipped 1.6%. Namibia's overall index also sank 1.42%, while the other stocks rose fractionally. That wraps Business Express for today. Remember to keep in touch with us, so do send in your comments, observations, and suggestions. Also, be informed that all previous episodes are available on YouTube on the NTS channel. You can also communicate with us via our various social media platforms. Business Express returns on Monday at 3 p.m. I am Musa Do have a nice weekend.